Hey, it's Kellen, and today I'm going to give you guys an exciting app to download. No matter if you're on iPhone or Android, you need to download ShowBuddy Finder. I'm going to have the link in the description, all that. This app will help you if you never want to go to a concert alone again, never want to go to an event alone again. I have the creator. Yes, the creator. This is what creation in the tech space looks like now. It's a new day. Natty, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for welcoming me. I'm really excited. I, I am too. When I saw this, I, I mean, I definitely just got a vision. I didn't know, you know, who the owner was, but I said, this is like Shark Tankable. Like, we need to see this on Shark Tank. Uh, I'm here in Seattle right now, soon to be in Florida. So we'll be neighbors and friends. And I'm just like, this I can see, you know, venture capital wise being a hit. What inspired this app? So pretty much the inspiration just came from, you know, friends bailing out last minute or people being too busy to hang out um, or, you know, just people having different interests in me and in music um, and events. Maybe somebody's not into running 5Ks, you know, but I was looking for, you know, groups of people who wanted to go to events with me in case, you know, my friends couldn't go. And um, I noticed actually when I was studying abroad in South Korea um, back in 2014, it was easy enough to find a group to go to whatever, you know, we wanted to go to like tourism wise or visiting cultural um, places or going out clubbing or whatever it was. You could just make a post on Facebook and, you know, all of the students would want to join in and we'd start messaging each other in the group chats on Facebook. But when I came back from South Korea, um, you know, the culture here is different. Most people don't like to go out with strangers. Um, in groups and stuff like that. So I made the app and that's really what inspired me to, you know, find, create something of my own since it wasn't already readily available. And so give us the background. Are you an app developer? Uh, yeah, yeah. I worked with a friend of mine. So, you know, all of the good apps we see now, it's teamwork. I have a good team with me. You know, these are people I've known for years. So I'm not the sole developer, but, you know, we all work together to make that happen. And what part of um, the app development do you like? And are, are, do, are you one of those where you can do it all? Um, I definitely like the artistic aspect. You know, I like the logos, uh, the color schemes. I like to do basically more of the artistic parts. Uh, the more software parts, that was what I did with my friends. You know, we bounce back off of each other on how would we want the interface to look. Okay. And, I, and what I want to do is give the audience a clear picture because, you know, someone will say, well, I'm a front end developer, I'm a back end, or I can do it all. And when you ask them, okay, what have you created recently? They, you know, they say, well, I, I need help. And I just love that, you know, you say you need a team because there aren't really too many good apps out there that don't have a team. So what is your education in and what made you go to South Korea? Um, I majored actually in education with a concentration in French. Um, I honestly was just really into K-drama. I was really into K-pop. I really enjoyed Korean culture and food. And, um, you know, this was back in 2014 before it was really mainstream, but that was just something I was really drawn to. And a lot of other study abroad programs were not within my budget. You know, Asia was relatively cheaper at the time. And um, it was just kind of more difficult to be approved, you know, compared to the European programs and other places like that, so. Man, okay, I think um, you, you might be the only person that um, I can talk about now K-pop that's not <laughs> Korean, uh, because most people are like, what are you talking about? I said, wait, listen to this song. K-pop has some hits. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a music guy first, and I, I've, I've had, you know, different radio sh shows, and I've even had an online station before 
you know, it was over 15 years ago and it, it did us well, but I love international music. I'd love to see the K-pop and the Western artists collab more, but oh, I'd yeah. also like K-pop to get with Africa and, and really get down with, you know, just let's create. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen, you know, some uh, uh, African-American female artists, they were in K-pop groups. And, you know, my friend was like, this could have been us. This could have been us. But I'm like, I'm not a singer. I can't. I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. This is, you know, but it's awesome. It's so amazing to see it. I wasn't around a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Just you got to find your, you know, your place in that right group and you don't have to do much. There's so so many people who've done that. And some of those groups have, you know, too many people in it. You can hide. So, right. no. That 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 is awesome. Um but with with the development, how did you then say, okay, I have this idea. How did you gather your team? How did you put it together? Yeah, so I basically I had to do my own homework. I had to learn Um, you know, a bunch of skills that I didn't know before, because to hire an app developer is about $20,000 and moving up. So I was like, you know what, I can, I'm pretty sure I can do it myself. I have some connections. And these are people I met in school, um, that I met abroad, that I met online, and we all just work together to do that. You know, there's so many resources online or think about the people in your own life. You know, I'm sure most people now have a tech background, so you can find someone who want to work with you, especially during these times, you know? Oh, yeah, especially. But especially during these times, even your friends might say, well, how much money is involved? So when you're working and working with your friends, I want this to be a teachable moment because a lot of people think, oh, that's my friend or that's my brother. They'll Mm. do it for free 99. (laughs) (laughs) And they expect it sometimes. So how do you, you know, work out the monies and work work with the budget? Okay, so basically... First, you're going to have to publish the app on the App Store, and they charge fees. Um, Google Play charges about a $25 fee. I don't know if it's gone up recently. And Apple, that's one time. Apple charges $99 a year. So you have to consider that. Plus, you know, the materials, some of them are free, but some of them have to be softwares you download, like Photoshop. Um, we used AppyPie and a few other softwares. And I was a student at the time, so those were discounted. And then um, then uh, my team, we agreed on doing 500 for um, the App Store and then 500 for Google Play. And what we did was we did Google Play first and then we just cloned it. So basically that's just rewriting it but making it for the App Store. So that the App Store part, the second part was easier, you know, the Google Play, we had to work from the ground up for that. So total, that was like a thousand dollars or so. Okay. And do you and when you're putting your team together, do you you guys discuss it beforehand and say, look, I'm I'm gonna only have this much. I'm gonna give you this much. Was that yeah beforehand beforehand? And do you do contracts when you do um work like that? Um it's recommended, you know, I always would recommend a contract, but in my case, I didn't. We did it verbally. Um, we did it over months, you know, like I could give you 200 this month, 200 next month, the final, you know, the third month. We, um, we agreed, you know, we, you know, people would set their worth and their price and, you know, we'd be like, I can do this for that much. And, um, you know, I can do an update for this much. And that was pretty much it. It was all verbal. Okay. Cause I, and I asked that because how do you then, when you are on the shark tanks and you are, you know, getting the venture capital and sometimes money changes most people or most of the time money changes most people, you know, someone see you and say, wait, you just got, you know, a hundred million dollar offer from Facebook. We're going to speak that into existence. They want to buy this. You know, how, how do you then say, no, this is mine. Like I paid you. I know. I know. Um, you know, that was just what we agreed on, but I wouldn't, you know, throw away my team after <laughs> I made it, you know, I would, I'd still want to work with them and I'd be able to help them, you know, also join in on Shark Tank and stuff. So um, they, you know, they all have their own lives. They're all full-time developers. They're all, you know, they're all in their own different careers. 
So um, this was just something that they did for fun or, you know, on their own spare time. And it's, uh, all, yeah. it's always fun until big money comes. <laughs> yeah, that could be a, yeah, that could be a good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't just like to get the game. We like to give it. And I would definitely say living this business thing, put something on paperwork saying I've paid you. Because what happens is if you did get a big funder and I've had this happen in real life with real business and they offer you, you know, X amount of dollars. And then when they're giving you, you know, 200,000 or 2 million and plus, they have their own team. And it's just like music, and I've seen it in music too. I'm not a publicist that Universal is going to want because I have an opinion outside of the Universal corporate thing on how we should do, mm -hmm. you know, music. So it, 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 they just, we got our people. We don't need your people. Thank you for getting us here. We've given given you the money. Now shut up. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's some it's, it's, the majority of the mentality. So I would definitely put something on paper, so, but you know, cause what yeah. you have looks fully functional um, playing with it. Yeah, absolutely. I did um, go out and start fi filing copyrights and patents and stuff. So that was, that's approved the copyright and the logos and the trademarks. Um, yeah, that's, that's been approved and a few more still pending. Now on the app, how do you find friends? Like, cause I'm really, this is a social media play. And that's why I said being bought by Facebook and, and it's, it's adding something that is just, I, I, I love it. But if you want to find people like in your area, is there a way to search uh, through the, you know, demographics locally? Um, we haven't worked on that feature yet. Really, you make an account and then you search through your area for the events and then you join into that group chat for the event listed. And then, you know, you can message back and forth with some users and, you know, you can see all of the users on the app and, you know, see their profiles, add them based on interests and stuff. So you can add people individually, but the group chats you know, are attached to each event that you would have to search for. Okay, so somebody could be traveling all the way from South Africa, Kenya, and if as long as they're going, they can see it. And and, and that's cool, but yeah. what about for the thirsties? Who say, <laughs> you, see, you know, <laughs> around and who I can, can bait? And, and, and <laughs> thirsty question, how do you, you know, secure the platform um, and try to bring some safety in case you do have some trollers? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we have the block button now, and I am monitoring it 24 hours, checking for anything inappropriate, and that gets deleted and flagged. Um, you can also even send me feedback. I'm working on an update that will let you send feedback through the app, but for now, you can always message me um, on email or DM me, you know, if you want to see something that you don't already see there, or if you have some concerns. Okay. Okay. Uh, hit, hit her in the DMs, you guys. <laughs> that's um. Now that's that's interesting. So, how long has the app been published? It's been published since 2019, and then Google Play 2018. So. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's it, it's quite new. Have mm -hmm. you looked at venture capital or angel capital? Um, I have. I've applied to a few, but uh, those usually, I think that they don't catch on until it's already kind of, I don't know, grown apart and is already sort of popular amongst the user bases first. Because, you know, I've done pitches and, you know, stuff like that, but I haven't really found anyone who was really sold yet, so... Well, that surprises me because, I mean, you guys will see the functionality of this app. It's, it's you know, for being new, everything seems functional. I don't see any errors on it. Um, and I'm just like, you know, it, it has stuff all over New York. Yeah. How do you choose your events? Yeah, so I'm basically curating all the events um, using all sorts of other 
event um, apps that I use to look for it, like Eventbrite, um, Facebook events, events that people would send in, um, and, you know, some other events that locals are planning in my area or people that I know that would like their event to be on the app. I've had a few like that. Yeah. Okay, so you're handpicking each event. Yeah. So in theory, you know, this is going to be great for somebody who has similar taste. But is there a way for you to like take everything that's on Eventbrite or meet up? You know, the, the, the AI sometimes is mysterious and can go grab <laughs> stuff. Have you looked into that yet? Um, yeah, I could, I could look into that and, you know, I don't want to disclose too much about our programming, but, you know, there are ways you can sort of get that, um, listed in there. And, um, we do have some features that help us locate those events. Um, I have a separate app that I'm using that manages everything. So that's how, that's also how I add the events. Okay, an app within an app. <laughs> yeah, it's an appception. I, I, I love it. I, I love it. Now, I don't know if you're familiar, but I, I have a feeling you are with Black Mirror. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> so season three, episode one, you, you, you know about it. I could almost see this thing say, you know, having, hey, if you don't have enough points, you can't come to this. <laughs> And that being a real, real feature in here. <clears throat> um, what are the, what, what do you plan for the future uh, with this app? Yeah, so I definitely want to, um, my plans are definitely to work on marketing a bit. I want to attract the users who would be into it. And so far the stats have shown that mostly people in California, New York, and Florida, and a little bit of Texas, you know, had an interest in this. I want to cater, I guess, to the demographics and, you know, the people who are into this, like Gen Z, millennials, and then um, everyone else. Uh, I want to add more events that are not just music based, but, you know, um, sporting events, philanthropy events, all sorts of events that people would be interested in. Yeah, the, the possibilities are endless. Does it become in the app business? And again, another teachable moment, um, because sometimes people will come to us and say, hey, we want this, the biggest site ever. And we want to run, you know, 22,000 hours of video. And you say, well, okay, do you have your own server? If not, let, let's get that bill rolling, right? Um, yeah. In the app, the bigger the app, does, do you need more space? Um, and, and how does that work? Like as you grow your app, besides manpower, which some people say that's debatable, what do you need and what are the limitations? Um, yeah, you're going to need more and more space um, as more users sign up. Uh, with every update you do to hold all those users, it's going to be difficult to keep the app running smoothly. You know, you don't want it crashing. Um, we're using Firebase, so that's something that is constantly changing and upgrading and updating their regulations. So we have to agree to that, and it's just, it's a never-ending process. You know, you think you can make the biggest site, but it never really ends. So, you know, you have to be really dedicated and motivated. Okay, de dedicated and motivation for sure. Yeah. It's just like when I see the app, I'm like, hold on, if you could input video or tell your stories of what happened after and that almost be like a you know collage of memories that's why i say this is so it's like a social media play like they should really be jumping on this um <laughs> be, because you could even show last year's app and and show how many people are having fun or how many people weren't having fun <laughs> i wish we saw more of that because this isn't black mirror yet but let's be honest some events are like man i'm, I'm not going to that they started three hours late <laughs> uh, and i'm not a person i'm waiting three hours so i need to <laughs> especially uh african african west african events are known to start you know late they start yeah. at midnight, but they really start at two. Um, yeah. 
And, and I can't stand that because people have lives and, you know, daycares yeah. and, and all that. And so if you got kids, you know, you <laughs> watch, like, my gosh. But but with, with this, have you tapped into any of the uh, social media outlets and said, hey, th this is us. We're here. Just wanted to let you know um, we might be obtainable or would you not sell it? Um, well, I've been advised to sell everything but marketing rights. So, of course, I'm going to look deeper into that. But um, would I ever sell it? Potentially. You know, I could always make even better apps. You know, it's not the end. And um, I have the patents and logos and all of that. So, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. But for now, no. Okay. Okay. Until they put that check, I got you. Until they, <laughs> they, they, they sign the check or bring the cash, I, I got you. So you're in the app space and, you know, you're developing. Are you still teaching? Yeah. Well, actually, I work for a company that scores standardized tests. So I do um, grades six through eight, uh, sometimes third grade, science, uh, English speaking, writing, all of that. So basically my job is gone fully remote and it has been since even before all of this uh, government restrictions. So pretty much um, that's pretty much who I've been working with for the past four years now since graduating college. Okay. Oh man. I, you're the type of person we would have <laughs> loved to know to say, you know, down with these tests. I, I <laughs> like standardized tests. <laughs> oh, um, but I, I found out, you know, this year why the, the doctor said, oh, you have dyslexia. I said, wow, that would have been nice to know, you know, um, yeah. but, um, but okay, standardized test and you, you don't work on the grading them, do you? What do you mean? Are grading you grading the, the, the standard? Are you grading the test? Are you? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm scoring them. You're scoring them. So mm -hmm. we always thought it was like the computer. There's really people behind there. Yeah, <laughs> for now. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, that's that's awesome. And, and how is your job impacted by the lockdowns? Um, you know, they they've always wanted to go in the direction of going fully remote. I don't know how long they have left on leasing their office or whatever, but. I don't know if they were ready to do that as soon as possible. You know, the timeline might have been different, but they were definitely already moving in that direction. Okay. But has with kids not being in school, and I know in my district, my kids, they gave every kid in the district a laptop and said, and we didn't even know they were ready for that. Yeah. But every district is not like that. Um, standardized testing, have they found out, you know, are they going to give it to kids online so you can continue to do your job for the, the next school year? Yeah. Um, I really don't know what direction they might go with that. You know, they might have some test cent centers they can go to. Um, I really don't know. But um, I do know it has been slower. Um, but we usually receive tests from last year anyway. You know, this we, we try to get it done um, between January, March, April, and then by summertime, you know, school's already out. So it just slows up immediately. But, um, you know, they're, they're working on their methods on what would be the most secure way. And, you know, there's a lot of different changes in the education system anyway. You know, a lot of parents are opting out of having their kids take the test. Um, there's just a lot of different ways it can go. So, yeah, there's that. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I think I would, I'm, I'm one of those, if my kids, you know, seem to struggle just cause I did, but, um, yeah. they like it and, and, you know, okay. If you like it, <laughs> I, I like it, but <laughs> we're going to Florida. I don't, I don't think, um, we'll even let them go to school till December. Um, if at all, because mm -hmm. I heard schools might not even open up. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had a few friends say that, you know, their kids aren't going to school till next year, next year fall. Some colleges, you know, a lot of schools are, you know, we might be living in a black mirror world by the time this is over. Just everything, 
<laughs> remote, online, you know, just <laughs> not what we've grown up used to. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, the old Twilight Zone. So my kids and my wife have all had to watch those. <laughs> they call me old, this, that. <laughs> I, I had a black and white TV uh, coming up. So maybe I was the last person with one. Probably, <laughs> probably not. Um, but I, I, they have to watch all that and, and stuff is really coming into play. What's yeah. funny though about Florida is the schools might not reopen, but the beach, the golf course could never close. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't get that. I said, wow, only, only in, you know. Well, you know, that's where we get our income from, tourism. So they're, you know, they're not trying to fully suffer the effects of that. We don't have a state tax just because of tourism and the beaches they're really uh the main beaches like miami fort lauderdale west palm they're not open yet fully you know you can walk along it but they're not going to let you you know play in the sand or water yet so fingers crossed oh, so there's <laughs> rules you have to keep keep on walking yeah you can't you can't like you know have a picnic out there now no Okay, I thought I thought you could, you know, I thought, I, well, and you never know what you see online because people kind of sometimes do what they want or they use old footage. Can you go jump in the water real quick? Or... <laughs> mm, I don't think so. I don't think you can, you can maybe walk along it. There's like boardwalks and stuff, uh, sidewalks and stuff you can walk to. But Jacksonville beaches are open. You can, you can go there. You know? yeah, it depends on the area. Got my theory about that. Jacksonville has, you know, the highest population of um, of African Americans. I said, how'd that beach open up first, and not the one in Miami? But <laughs> yeah, I know, well, so <laughs> I don't know. They pick and choose. Yeah, yeah, they they definitely do. Experimental. Who knows what's going on in this pandemic? Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but I'm I'm glad you you know you broke that down because many people I'm you know again here in Seattle will say man what Florida what is the <laughs> doing but to a Floridian you're like no it makes sense because our tourism dollars and yeah you know, you know. yeah and that's yeah. why everything's opening up now because you know the um, person in charge for the moment says hey I can't afford <laughs> to lose all this money but that's yeah. No, that that is interesting. I have a question though. With mm-hmm. going back to the app, and you have an app inside the app. Yeah. Um, w- which one did you build first? The the one that you only have that helps you, you know, kind of navigate things, or was it that after the app was built, you said, actually, I need something to monitor this. I need a better system. Yeah, I built my app first, the admin app. That came first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and what was the, the thinking behind it? Did you already know that to monitor this, you know, thing or I need it, was, is it kind of like a, a mini app inside the app or, or are we seeing the mini app <laughs> inside no, your app? You guys don't have access to it. I have the login for it. So when I log in, it, it's different for me. But basically we had to figure out a way to make it, um, you know, easy where I could manage it. And, um, you know, I needed something that wouldn't be too difficult in compared to other apps we have, you know, there's a lot of ways we could have gone about having the event list and stuff, but we just brainstormed and thought this would have been the best way to manage my app and then, um, you know, make updates with it and uh, change it. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Okay, no, that's that is beautiful, beautiful. And all of this creation, and you know, it's a free app, so people can download it. Will it ever come to where you're going to charge? Are you? Um, I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, for now, we're not charging. Uh, I think a lot of the best apps aren't really. Uh, they don't have a price yet. It's when you go in the app, you know, for the extra features is when you see, you know more ads or more ways to you know be charged if you if you decide to do that okay and we we know the people love free apps because (laughs) you can play around you can see and i think some of the best apps are free i'm a big yelper Mm -hmm. 
And, and so, you know, something I, I, I love that I can do that and it's free. They don't try to charge me except when, you know, they call you, hey, do you want some free ads if you have a business on there? Yeah. Which, which folks, that ruins your Yelp elite status, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Two thumbs down. But um, yeah, no, that's, I just did, yeah, just want to know because a lot of times people, when they do stuff, they're like, well, I need to make some revenue. I'm spending all this time on it, but they don't see the bigger picture that you might have, you know, a hundred million dollar or billion dollar app on your hand. And you're talking about collecting, you know, $5 or $20,000. So uh, where does that business mind come from? Where, what inspired that? Yeah. So, um, uh, what inspired me to, I- I'm sorry, you said, where yeah, is the- your, bu- your business mind and your business okay. sense? Um, what, in- what inspired that? Was it parents? Was it a friend? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, my older brother always been business minded. He has his own clinic in Texas. And I'm actually going to throw Texas under the bus really quick. Like all of the Southern states are opening up right now. Like most of the Southern states, they get their revenue from, you know, outsiders. But um, yeah, you know, he always instilled that in me. He was a big supporter of my app. He, you know, helped me so much with the development aspect and, you know, uh, you know, funding me, all of that. So that was definitely a big inspiration. And then my own personality, you know, I have like a very non-traditional job and life. So, you know, my career education wise was a perfect fit for me, that company that I work for. And then, um, you know, my attitude, I just couldn't do, um, you know, really stressful environments. I work with a mature crowd and, you know, they've always been respectful and great. So I like, working on my own terms with you know people i like and that's i think that's what everybody likes no definitely definitely every every i i like freedom it's i just need to be free to do me and he has a clinic so this is a a medical clinic yeah yeah he's an ophthalmologist he does um all of the eye surgeries and appointments and you know works with um elderly patients with glaucoma all of that Okay. In in Texas, what part of Texas? Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you got, we might put his link down there, you yeah, know, send, yeah. that, send that to me. <laughs> put that in there. Um, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Beautiful. And with the success that's coming your way, have you thought about your community give backs that you're going to do? Oh yeah. I for sure want to, um, I want to teach, you know, um, more coding for, you know, younger girls of color, younger boys of color. I want to teach them, you know, about how to file your own patents because that can get really expensive too if you don't know um, what you're doing and you want to hire someone. You know, I want to teach everything that I've had to figure out so it'll be a little bit easier for, you know, the younger generations behind me. Okay. No, that's, that's awesome. You know, there's some um, government, uh, I don't want to call them, they're not grants, but they're RFPs, you know, contracts out there for that. And, and I would definitely say, look into your local SBA, PTAC score, because there's money to teach that. And I think when you talk with those government type entities, you just learn more of what's out there because um, a lot of the money is not used in certain parts of the world. Here in Seattle, oh, folks fight over it. But when I live down south, I'm like, what do you guys mean? You don't know about this, this, or this, because it's not really promoted anywhere. It's yeah. just, you know, if it, it, it's something about, you know, the, the tech space and the tech hubs. It's the reason why California and Washington and New York get certain things sometimes first. Yeah, it, you know, but yeah, definitely look into that, and I might send you over a link. Let me ask you this: Was Korea your first place that you went overseas? No, no. Um, my family, I'm Haitian, Haitian American. You know, my family's all from the island, so I would spend every summer up until college visiting family in Haiti, 
Um, I've gone to the Bahamas. I've gone, um, you know, within the United States, other states. And then South Korea was just the first part of Asia that I went to. And then after that, I actually met a group of friends who wanted to explore within Asia. So we went to Japan, too. So those two were the first very far east places that I've been to. Okay. And and I know, you know, reading an article, you seem to enjoy your yourself out there. Just wondering what made you come back? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right? Um, you know, I definitely had people tell me to stay there and move, like stay there permanently. So that was funny that you said that. They were like, why are you moving back? you know, and friends that taught there and moved there and lived there. But, you know, I just didn't want to be too far away from my family. So that was pretty much it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there wasn't, it was, it was no, no, no Boaz to keep you to say, Hey, let me sing this K-pop song. <laughs> r- r- romance. I got you. But, but you felt comfortable there. Oh yeah. I felt really comfortable there. It's, it's so advanced there. You know, once I got over a little bit of the culture shock, I felt really comfortable and really happy. And, you know, traveling just attracts more people who also like to travel. So I was around a bunch of really adventurous people and we would we were doing something every day. And that was just great for me. Yeah. No, that's 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 awesome. That's awesome. And Haiti. Oh, I cannot wait to visit Haiti. My my Haitian, uh, I call it my Haitian friends and family, but it's just family. They're like, no, nah, you can't go without me. But I'm like, <laughs> y'all better go like within a year and a half because I need to see Haiti in its entirety. I mean, I want to bring even clients out there to you know film a documentary but yeah you- go dude there are some beautiful places there and good food good people music and parties and fun you know if i ever would move i probably would move like with my family to haiti if things got really bad here <laughs> it, wow and that says a lot <laughs> you know that, that says a lot yeah. um wh- now when, every time i talk to someone about going to haiti they say well, watch out for the corruption. I said, look, I go all through Africa. I go Caribbean, Mexico, wherever, right? I, I, I'm, I got, I'm on my, my P's and Q's. But do you need to know Creole uh, to get through Haiti? Um, it would help to have at least a friend that's fluent, you know? Okay. You can go to all the tourist parts and enjoy everything, and you'd be, you know, taken care of without actually having to know the language, but it's always good to go with a friend. Like I never have gone without my family, you know, my brothers or someone. Okay, is your is your Creole not fluent? I have an American accent. I wasn't born there. So they know, they know when they hear me speak, they're like, oh, you're American. <laughs> you speak though. Yeah, yeah, I do. I understand everything that they're saying too. That scares me, that shocks people, yeah. <laughs> okay, and, and you can talk back to them. I mean, okay, you got an American accent. It's, it, you know, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> but as long as you can, you can get through. Um, yeah. You know, but no, I um, I, I have to go see um, Haiti, and I gotta go into someone's kitchen. And, <laughs> and they yeah. have fish laid out, and I have to go in their kitchen, go in the fridge. And say, no, I don't want that pickles. I want the one <laughs> in the back of the refrigerator. That's the one. <laughs> Give yeah. it to me, and and you know, really get down. But yeah, I can't. I cannot wait, especially for what flight tickets are right now. Yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's it's time. That's what I was asking you. You know, were you fluent? So if I say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> we we we, you know, we got five tickets, and, and we're <laughs> for you. Uh, let, let's go. It, yeah. yeah, you know, it'd be awesome. There's waterfalls, so much uh, culture. There's so many things you can do, you know? Okay, okay. And I don't think Haiti has been highlighted properly. You know, yeah. all we see, it's like Africa back in the day, all we would see is, you know, okay, you see the earthquake or you see, you know, poverty. I want to see posh Haiti. I want to see even the, sl- the slums, but the slums, 
it's all good in the hood, you know, in places, in some places. Not to say that the people can't have, you know, more opportunities, because that's usually what's lacking, but the spirit of the people is what I'm talking about. In the, yeah, in the it's home. like everywhere else, you know, there's hoods here, there's slums here, there's, you know, unsafe places over here too, but there's also a lot of beautiful places too. And, you know, we should focus on what's beautiful and, you know, really help with tourism because that's also another one of their main attractions is tourism. So, okay, yeah, so I'm all down for tourism as long as it's not sex tourism. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> y'all weirdos stay at home and that's a no no, <laughs> yeah. But I definitely, I'm you, you know, I don't want to give the folks a game overload, I want to talk to you a little bit after. Uh, mm -hmm. I, and I thank you for coming on. Thank you for reaching out. Yeah. You guys have gotten the game. Make sure you share this with somebody who can be inspired. They might have, you know, thoughts of their own app. They might have thoughts of even, you know, going to South Korea and don't have anyone to go to and they see <laughs> and can hear the story, how Natty did it. You guys like, share, subscribe. Be blessed. Dang,